Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do an automatic, automated install of software onto your Raspberry Pi using Diet Pi, and this will work for other target devices. I just happen to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 today. I want to thank you for watching, and please visit flyingrich.com where you'll see my social media, you'll see my posts, what I've been up to, and when new videos come out. You'll also see the podcasts I'm on, like the Mini PC Show and the current episodes of the Mini PC Show, The Makers, which unfortunately I have been guesting on recently, Tilts, which is recorded live weekly, the Linux Link Tech Show, and if you like what I'm doing and want to support me, I ask you, please consider setting a buck a month. And thank you very much. And I want to thank all of my patrons. That's Umar Sear, Andy Meows, Ian from Calgary, John Hollinger, Matt Champ, and Tom O, the Token Linux guy. Thank you guys for your support. Alrighty guys, so we're going to install from DietPi, the Raspberry Pi software, and I'm just showing you how to download it. You're going to be downloading a zip file. Once that's done downloading, you see in the bottom left there, it's showing you the progress bar. If I was kind, I would have speeded it up, but I'm not kind, so you're going to have to live with this few second delay. Once it's done downloading, we're going to have to unzip it. In the Mac world, you just do that by... Uh, double clicking on it and it will unzip for you and then we'll see the progress on that momentarily and that's what you see going on in the bottom right is you're seeing the progress bar for the unzip once that's done we can open etcher all right well we're gonna open the file explorer here and we're gonna see where the files located so there's etcher you're going to select the image in that location in the downloads in that diet pie directory in the zip directory where the dot image file exists it automatically selected the SD card you click flash and you're gonna to have to enter your password that's the password to unlock the computer I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to wait because I am kind right here and ta-da it's done Okay, and we're going to eject the microSD card. Oh, and reinstall it so we can edit the file that's on the boot partition. So this is the dietpy.txt. Now, if you don't know what you want to install and you've got another installation of dietpy around, you can SSH into that dietpy install and take a look at the software because it's going to give you the number that correlates to the software you're going to install and you're going to see me fat finger the password here ready and ta-da okay so if you enter your password correctly you'll be able to SSH into the diet pie installation on another machine and if you do diet pie and tab 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 it will show you all of your choices I'm selecting software and then if you arrow down to software optimized and hit enter it'll show you the list and in my case I'm gonna do pretty much an identical install so you see that it's 42 for Plex and I'm gonna select transmission also but you could do this for any software that's listed here just copy copy down the number and you're good to go I'm just doing this to illustrate what I've selected in the past and what I'm going to be doing for this install right now. Once you're done, you can hit tab to click back or OK, you know, tab and then the arrow keys because that'll get you out of this screen. And you'll see me attempt to do it with the mouse, forgetting what to do. OK, and I'm just going to click exit, cancel, and really you should type exit in that screen, but now I'm going to show you how to edit the dietpy.txt file. So if you right mouse click, you could select an editor as an open with, and I'm going to be doing this with Sublime Text because I'm a cool application developer, that's why. Uh, Sublime Text is free and it's cross-platform, so you can do it on whatever platform you're doing. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to se select... 
Okay, right now I'm just showing you the networking. So if you had Wi-Fi selected as an enabled on line 32 there, you could enter the Wi-Fi SSD and the password. But I'm going to be doing this Ethernet only for this install. I'm going to just hit a pound sign in front of all of these because I'm not going to be doing a static setup. I'm going to be doing DHCP. I'm going to be changing the name to Diet Pie Example. So when it shows up on my router, I know which one it is. I would know because I know it's on my network, but you could change the name if you like. So automatic setup, you're going to have to set to one, and then it's going to know that you're going to want to set software up. And I'm kind of cheating because I have a list prepared, and I'm just going to copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy these items into the lines here, which, and paste, and voila. And I also made a comment, so you see Plex Transmission, Sonar, Radar, Sync Thing, and NFS are the one items I've selected. I'm also going to change this to select Open SSH. So with Open SSH, you can do SCP without it. The default is Drop Bear, and you can't do SCP. I'm just scrolling through the rest of this config file just to show you what's there. There's various usernames and passwords. The default password is DietPy. We're going to do a control F and we're going to search for passwords in a moment. And I'll show you where that's located. So these are all the settings and configs that you can do. All right, so now I'm searching for password. And when you see it come up to Diet Pie, that's where the default one. So that line 74 there. Diet Pie is your default password. You so all of the apps you install, the default password is going to be Diet Pie. Typically username is root. So if you want to change it, that would be the location to change it at. And I did a control F again, I'm looping through this, so I apologize. So if you do a save, you could do either a splat S or go to the menu and select save. I'm also going to save it to my hard drive on my computer. Right now it's showing the boot partition. So I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to go to my DietPy directory that I'm doing for this video. And I'm going to save it as DietPy Ethernet because I'm doing this with Cat5. So if you eject, install the microSD card, power up, and boom, you see stuff happening. Now, I'm doing this at 20x speed because it took about 20 minutes to do the install. Once it's done, I'm going to just show you the interface, the user interface on a browser for how the install looks. So this is installing a stink load of packages. The Sonar and Radar are a real pain in the butt to install. Um, something like Plex isn't so bad to install. You can do an apt install Plex. Uh, I believe it's apt install Plex media server or apt install Plex media server install. Um, not so hard to do. But, all right, and now we're ready. So if I type in the IP address, which is 104, which we saw from the console on the previous screen, and the port, which is 34200 for Plex, and it's going to redirect you to their server, want you to log in, and I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to pop open a new tab, and I'm going to type in the IP address, which is 104 again, colon, 8989, and you'll see that's going to bring up Sonar, and then I'm going to pop open a new tab, I'm just going to grab that so I don't have to type again. And we're going to put in IP address 7878, which is radar. So sonar is for series, radar is for movie. I remember S for sonar, S for series. And now we're going to do 9091 on that port, which is transmission. Password is root. I'm sorry, username is root, password is diapi. And that's your transmission screen. 
this is how you would be installing apps. And yeah, it wants to remember. So right here, if you click sign in and you have a Plex account already, which I did not show you, uh, tell, it gives you a little bit of how it works. It's asking you for money. They do good stuff for you. So if you repay them with some dinero, that would be very nice. Now, I did this with the Raspberry Pi plugged into a monitor, so I saw everything going on. Really, you don't have to have a monitor, and if you don't have a monitor, most routers, most modern routers, allow you to log in and see the device is connected to it, and that's why I changed the name to Diet Pi Example, and you'll see that right here, Diet Pi Example, and the IP address is 192.168.0.104. So you would be able to SSH into it or use the UI uh, from the web, so opening a web page to that IP address and with the proper port number for the application and you would be able to use it that way completely headless without using a monitor. Thank you for watching the video. Please thumbs up and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that.